eyes. <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to a new garden vlog. If you don't already know me, my name is Saren and I'm an illustrator and I like to garden and I have two cats and that is, that's me. <laughs> so the last week or so I've been doing some jobs outside and I have filmed them all so before I get on with like a tour of how the garden is looking now, you can enjoy those clips and don't forget to like and subscribe and I will chat to you in voiceover. Everything has really started to burst into life over the last few days slash weeks. We have had very dry weather. We haven't had rain in a long time. Um, it's been very, very warm, but kind of still cold in the nights. But yeah, I decided to go on holiday um, from mid-May and it was probably the worst time to go on holiday because mid-May is when you start to plant everything out and yes I was worried um, I was away for about 10 days and I was so worried when I got back but everything did survive uh, my cat sitter watered our seedlings and yeah when I got back I just went crazy planting everything out moving all my pots around um, getting rid well not getting rid as in digging up the tulip bulbs and you know doing all those kind of transitional jobs that should have been done in mid may when i was away but yeah everything is looking quite good at the moment and i decided to mulch all of my pots and containers with strulch uh, not so much because we've had any slugs around at the moment it's been so dry i think they've all just been hiding but um to keep the moisture in the pots uh it's gonna look it seems like we're gonna have some kind of hose pipe ba ban soon because there is absolutely no rain forecast at all so yeah i'm worried i don't have a water butt but even if i did have a water butt there wouldn't be any water in it at the moment because there's been no rain <laughs> but yeah when i got back from my holiday i felt so overwhelmed i just felt that i had so much to do i didn't really film me planting out stuff um, so this is just me like tending to my garden, uh, mulching everything and having a nice time. It's been so nice to just go outside in the evenings and clear my head, just wander around, see what's growing. Slowly fill up all the gaps with um, leftover seedlings. I'm really starting to stuff things in at the moment, um, but it's going to look really nice in the next few weeks when things... Um, start to bloom. I was worried that I didn't have enough in the garden. I felt like some areas were a little bit bare, but I do need to remember that it's only the beginning of June. Things are really going to fill out soon. They're going to grow. <laughs> they're going to get taller. They're going to get bushier. And you just need to be patient with gardening. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I'm planting out some marigolds here. They are quite root bound because they've been left in their modules for a bit too long. Um, I'm also planting out some basil babies next to the tomatoes and just filling some gaps, going with the flow. I didn't stick to my planting slash garden plan <laughs> as you'll be able to see when I go, th um, go through everything later on. but. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. I kind of like just going out there and seeing what needs to be done, seeing what else I can plant. Um, it's nice. I just love gardening. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the main things I like about having a container garden, um, there are drawbacks of having container gardens, one being the watering. You have to stay on top of watering all your containers and pots, but. The nice thing about having everything in containers as pot and pots is that you can move things around. <laughs> I've moved quite a lot around in the last week or so, just trying to like figure out where the sun, where the like the hottest parts of the garden, the sunniest parts of the garden is and moving uh, plants that seem to be struggling into like the shady areas and 
yeah, I like being able to move things around. Like if something dies back or doesn't look so good, I can just hide it. <laughs> I can just take it away, put it somewhere else. Um, yeah, it's just nice. Here I'm potting up some nasturtium babies, putting them in a little hanging basket. I feel like I need a lot more hanging things in my garden at the moment. I'd like some more hanging baskets, I think. I also really would like some more fairy lights. I've got one strand of fairy lights at the moment, but I feel like I could put more along maybe the archway. Just string them up everywhere. I really like fairy lights. <laughs> maybe I could do like a little makeover video where I tidy up and put some cool things up <laughs> like fairy lights maybe I should paint my table and chairs as well hmm got some outdoor cushions as well that need to go out so if you'd like some kind of garden makeover or garden jazz up your garden kind of video then let me know <laughs> Here's a fun little project that I did this week as well. Um, my radish were all ready to harvest. I, I think I picked 32 radish in the end. And oh, it was just so fun. <laughs> it was just so fun picking all these little, little shiny red blobs. Um, so personally, I'm not a massive fan of radish. I wouldn't just eat a radish on, on in a salad or something. Um, but last year I didn't really grow enough. I just grew like a couple of handfuls of radish. And this year I decided that I wanted to grow enough to be able to make a big jar of pickled radish. I really like gherkins. <laughs> so I thought this could be like some kind of gherkin alternative. Anyway, I am slicing up all my radish, my 32 radish, and I tried to use like this slicey peeler kind of thing, mandolin, but not quite. Um, but it wasn't very sharp and it was kind of like just shredding my poor little radish. So I hand chopped all these little baby radishes and I tried to do them as thinly as possible. They're not all that thin, but it doesn't matter. It was quite like meditative, just chopping these little radish. <laughs> it was really nice. Um, I will leave the recipe in the description if you wanna try pickling your own radishes. Can confirm that they taste really good. I really like them. They're kind of like sweet and sour and spicy. Um, I think they're better than gherkins to be honest because they've just got like that little spiciness about them put some garlic cloves in some chili seeds or crushed chilies and some peppercorns and i think i doubled the recipe so i ended up doing um one cup of vinegar to one cup of water and then like four tablespoons of honey in the brine i think but um i've only ever pickled one thing before which was last year i did pickled jalapenos um, this is kind of a similar thing, like I've eaten these radish in like burgers because they give kind of like a nice little crunch. But one word of warning, when you open the jar, they really stink. <laughs> They're still nice though. Okay, I think it's time to give you a little tour of what the garden's looking like now. A couple of things have gone quite wrong. Um, but that's to be expected. This is only my second year gardening and yeah, I've made some mistakes, but it's weird because I didn't make these mistakes last year, but I'm making them this year. Anyway, I need to still do a couple of jobs outside and I wanna sow some seeds. I feel like there's a couple of gaps and I think I'm missing a lot of height. This year I feel like 
everything's just really low down but to be honest it is only the 4th of June or is it the 3rd? I don't know. It's the 3rd or 4th of June and I need to remember that these plants still have a lot of time to grow. Yeah I just I do feel like there's lots of gaps that you'll see now and I shall explain when we're outside. Okay I think my neighbours have gone out so I feel safe. <laughs> Can't go outside talking to the camera. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's go outside. So as you step out of my front door, no back door, <laughs> this is the situation. These planters are a new addition. They are made from recycled wood. I did buy them because I don't have a something to slice wood with. What's it called? <laughs> a circular saw maybe? Um, so I did buy these and they weren't too expensive. And in this one, I have my snack peppers and a sunflower. <laughs> snack pepper, sunflower, snack pepper, tomato. I think that's a dry cork. That's the Welsh tomato variety, and I figured if it was Welsh, it would do well, not in a greenhouse. I hope. And then in here, I've also got some lettuce. This is a cut and come again lettuce. This is freckles, and I've also got some oregano. That is alisum oregano. Oh god no. So it's a little mix of things and um, I've probably got too much in here but I figured like these won't last the whole season. Like some flowers they just go up flower and then they're done. Um, but yeah anyway these peppers are doing really really well. They've all got little flower buds now and they've really bushed out. So yeah this one's looking good. Um, down below I have four of my chili plants. This is a sugar rush peach. I think this is a jalapeno, 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 and a sugar rush peach. These have also started to bush out a lot and this one, this one's the bushiest. It's got loads of little puppet leaves happening. And I've mulched everything with strolch. One to keep the moisture in and two slugs. This is a clematis which has flowered and finished now but it's putting out lots of new leaves so hopefully that will really like bush out and cover the whole bamboo thing I've got going on. Onto this area. So I've got some herbs down here. I've got lemon balm which I thought was dead but it's fine. <laughs> Purple sage strawberry mint this was a cutting from my mum it smells absolutely amazing like strawberries um and i thought it was dead as well but it's coming back um i need to start picking some because i realize it's getting really tall and that is garlic chives so they're just down here kind of shaded a little bit from by this planter and then we have this area which is not not great this is one of my mistakes this year so um these are my sweet peppers the corno di toro rosso and they have been this is just some old string <laughs> um they've been absolutely battered it's really windy in this area which is not great and it's also really sunny so i feel like they just kind of went into shock they got absolutely battered by the wind and um, yeah I'm hoping that they're just putting their energy into sorting their roots out and then hopefully we'll get more leaves out of the little armpits and they will bush out because yeah they are not in good shape. Um, I was tempted to buy some more but I'm gonna leave it because they've only been in for about a week 10 days so maybe they'll sort themselves out I hope anyway. And yeah, they're underplanted with nasturtium. That is a 
snapdragon, this is some parsley, this is greek basil which is actually doing really well here. It's slower growing than sweet basil but it's good for drying apparently. <laughs> and then I've also put some lettuce in and I know this is just going to bolt straight away, I don't know why I did it. Um, but yeah, I, I, my vision was they would get a bit shaded by the pepper plants but that's not it at the moment so yeah this is oh, this smells so good it smells so good so yeah i'm really hoping my peppers just don't die and they push out some new leaves really soon because i'm really sad i'm really upset here are my potatoes these are maris piper main crop potatoes i think and they have started to make little flowers but I feel like I didn't put enough compost in. Um, I could have topped them up a bit further, but I've run out of compost. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we'll just leave it. And then behind them, I have my pot of raspberries. And yep, there's little baby berries starting to form already. These are autumn bliss, I think. I think they're autumn fruiting anyway, but they're already starting to get some berries, which is great. So that's a little overview of the area coming out the back door. Um, I've got I've got piles of stones everywhere, so ignore those for now. We're gonna we're gonna do something with them soon. So from the pepper area, here's a little bit more of an overview of this section of the garden. I do have two archways now, which I'll share in a bit, <laughs> and then my flower border. I do have some foxgloves, but they're starting to go over already, which is sad. I really liked, I really loved the box gloves. Right, we'll come back to this pot in a minute. So behind the pallet planters, recycled wood planters, I have some onions and this is disaster number two because they have started to bolt already. I think they just got way too hot in this area and yeah, I'm not really sure what to do. I guess a couple of them haven't bolted, but I think it's a little bit too late. Apparently I can harvest this. Ooh, this piece of plastic. Yeah, apparently I can still harvest the ones that are bolted and they'll be fine. But they're so small. I guess this is only my first time growing onions, so whatever. That's fine. It's a learning experience. <laughs> and then this raised bed. Also another little bit of a disaster. Oh, my shadow is in. There we go. So, ooh, it's a loud sparrow. Right, so these are my backup chilies, which are also not too happy in this location. I only put them here a few days ago and they're like sunburnt <laughs> already, which is <laughs> annoying. Um, I've got perpetual spinach, which I didn't think it was going to do anything, but it has done something. But I feel like I need to move it because that courgette has just like burst <laughs> this week. It's already got a flower forming. I did direct so some carrots. I know that says aubergine, but I just put the label there to know where I put the carrot. Um, and these poor looking peppers are paprika and I think I think they're goners as well they have got tiny little teeny weeny little shoots so I'm just hoping I'll give them another week <laughs> I'll give them another week that is my only Mrs Mars sunflower I was hoping it would grow a little bit faster and give some like shelter but no it's very slow growing there's another paprika in a terrible state and we have another courgette this one's also exploded in the last week um it wants to grow this way so i'll just let it let it go that way i've also interplanted some nasturtium oh and i've got one random cosmos there so that's it moving on we've got red onions here which have also bolted <laughs> so yeah i think i'm just gonna get rid of them i think this one's okay actually and that one looks like it's getting quite big so 
So from here, we'll go to the flower border. Just notice a little bee. Hello. You're really noisy, but you're really small. <laughs> um, I've got two red curry curry squash planted here. And I noticed they've already been a little bit nibbled, which is not good. <laughs> and i've also got two sunflowers and these sunflowers were like looking so so sad they've like got really twisted stems so i wasn't sure they were gonna survive but they're still going but they've also been really eaten and we have poppies these are so beautiful but they only last like a day or two <laughs> before they go over um i love them flower border is uh yeah all i've got in here is basically cosmos and sunflowers sunflower cosmos and then these stalks are the dying daffodils i hope they're gonna die back soon they're just still going those leaves um here my alliums they've gone they've gone over they really did not last long but maybe they just flowered when i was away <laughs> um this down here is a hollyhock i bought that last year it's like a peach color down here there is a gap because i put my achillea in there and it keeps trying to grow back but i think something's eating it every time it tries to grow back so it's like one two three four little shoots and it's really annoying because last year it was in a pot and it did so well but i thought i'd put it in the border and it would do even better but it's not <laughs> behind the shed there is wisteria growing that is a totally different story and it's growing from underneath the shed basically the wisteria and onto the foxgloves oh, that was a little bee on there the bees have been going absolutely crazy for these and I'm so happy. And they're actually all taller than me, I think. No, I think I'm taller than this one. But that one, that one's much taller than me. Hello? Oh. So a lot of them have been doing, uh, making little secondary flower spikes. really windy though in this area i think it's just been windy lately and i had to um <laughs> tie them on because they were literally just flopping over poor things and these two as well and then between the regular um foxgloves i have this perennial foxglove which was in a pot last year and i put it in Oh, hi. I'm <laughs> in the reflection. Um, I put it in here and it's so much shorter than the rest, but it's got the prettiest, absolute prettiest flowers on it. The colours are like creamy, yellowy and that bright pink. They're just so nice. And it's got three little flower spikes, which is nice. These are all the rocks that I need to sort out <laughs> and move. <laughs> And then onto this corner where we have the archway linking the two borders. I have cosmos and two pumpkins. I didn't think they would survive, so they are a little bit close together, but whatever. I'll just add more compost to them when I get some. So these are, they're not baby boo, Jill be little or Jack be little. So they're like little pumpkins and I'm going to train them over the archway. Here we have my calendula. And yeah, it's looking so good, isn't it? <laughs> so a couple did die. This one is surviving. That one's doing pretty well, to be honest. But I think I might, I think I might put like a couple of cosmos in between just to bulk it out. Cause yeah, they're not looking fantastic. And then my lavender's looking terrible as well. Anyway, so here we are little overview let's move on to the pots over here now i think this pot is my favorite we've got i think eight runner beans 
Um, I had zero beans and then I came back from holiday and I had eight beans, which is good. I think they just needed a little bit more time. So I've got the courgette, eight beans. I've got some nasturtium. These are the tall ones, which I'm gonna try and grow up the archway as well. We've got, um, I think that's an aster. I just didn't know where to put things. I was just chucking them everywhere. Um, this is a snapdragon, which I didn't pinch out. So it's just like one really long stem. <laughs> Um, those two are also snapdragons. I've got some little tiny baby nasturtiums just popping up. They're popping up everywhere and I'm actually happy because I felt like I didn't plant enough and then suddenly I had those sprouting. That is a aster as well. And under here I have some zinnia. That's a zinnia as well, but obviously they are not looking great. But yeah, I absolutely love this pot is my favorite. <laughs> Oh, and in here I have a fuchsia. My mum gave me a cutting last year, so it's still in the pot, but I'll probably put it in the border, like over there at some point, probably next year, I think. And then going down this slope, I have three bags of Charlotte potatoes. Again, I feel like I didn't put enough soil compost in them, but maybe there's still time to top them up. Um, pumpkins there, yeah, pumpkins there old tulips there and then the other side of the archway oh, it's a really loud plane so i've got two more um jack or jilby little pumpkins here and some nasturtiums um this is kind of like it was a no dig kind of border i just dumped compost um on top and you can still see like where I didn't put the compost, there's loads of clay soil. It's just really bad, really, really bad. So I'm hoping they'll be okay. I'm going to just keep adding compost to this area um, and hope to build the soil back up. <laughs> and then here we have my daisies or marguerites. There's lots and lots of buds on here now and lots and lots of bugs, but I've noticed the sparrows have been eating all the little aphid kind of things off them. And down here I have some cosmos, I think these are pink cosmos and another red curry squash and here is a makeshift bird bath. It's just a tray on top of a pot with a stone in. Haven't seen anyone use it yet but <laughs> that's that. Oh yeah and there's another, what's it called, it's nasturtium just popped up. It's Oh, there's two, I think. They're just growing in the paving, which is great. <laughs> On to my second big pot. The archway is coming from the bean pot into this pot. I still have onions and these haven't bolted just yet. So I'm going to keep a close eye on these, make sure I'm watering them every evening and they're not getting too hot. And I've got two tomatoes in here. These again are the Welsh tomatoes that dry cook. So yeah i'm hoping they will just like grow up here as well <laughs> and in here i have yeah there's like a couple of zinnia which are not great either and some more random nasturtiums popping up and those are old daffodils that they're just slowly slowly dying back that's heather which i think is dead <laughs> and in here i've put the pot in a bucket because I was trying to like protect it as much as possible from slugs and sails. I have my lupin and there are one, that's one flower spike, two, three. So there's definitely going to be three flowers on this eventually. And I think it's big enough to kind of like withstand slug and sail damage now, which is good. So hopefully I'll have some flowers very soon. So there we have the pot. I think we're gonna go around this way. So I've put water, well, that's dried up. There was water and some seed for the birds. They have been drinking the water and eating the seeds. I just need to refill that. So anyway, we have my garlics around here. And honestly, I don't know like when <laughs> I'm supposed to harvest them. I know these are soft neck, soft neck. Is that right? The ones that don't produce the flower or the garlic scape. So these two 
a soft neck and there's lots of like dead leaves so does that mean they're ready or does that mean they just haven't <laughs> had enough water and they're just dying and then the third bag over here if you can see these are the hard neck because i noticed literally yesterday that that was a garlic scape so i'm gonna have to pick that like right now but it's the only one that's made a um escape yet yeah, unless that is gonna be escape i'm not sure so yeah only the middle one has made a garlic scape so far this is my first time growing garlic as well so i honestly have no idea and these are my remaining seedlings which i'll show you now on the trellis i just have some strawberries look at those and stuff up there as well okay going round the table i guess i should show you my greenhouse quickly so in here i have six chili plants these are serrano um cayenne i think i need to like make proper labels for them and i've just noticed there's a little flower on that one already and these are oops these are pepper dew i didn't know anything about pepper dew because they were just some free seeds that i got um they're a lot bigger than i thought so maybe they should have been in a bigger pot which is um too late now i guess <laughs> and i don't have any compost um so yeah these also got quite sunburnt but they have been pushing out a lot of new leaves um yeah i think they're looking okay now and then underneath them i think i've got yeah these are greek basil um, I really need to get these out, I feel bad for them. Um, some snapdragon, snapdragon. I think there's some more oregano left in there. Mm, chamomile, two sage plants, and this is thyme. So those need to go out very soon. I'm shutting the door because it keeps like flapping about, making a racket, so there we go. Around here we have peas. And I know that, oh, sorry, I'm in the way. I know that these, oh, they're flowering. I've got little flowers already. Um, it's too hot for them in this area. And I know that you should keep the roots of pea plants cool. So maybe I'll have to move them over there, like to where the garlic is. So they have some more shade, but the, they can grow. They can grow into the sun, but the pot will stay cool and i've also got nasturtium growing in this pot these they must have just been in the compost because i always reuse my potting soil so they've just sprouted up which is nice <laughs> over here we have two passion flower plants and i've noticed that there are a lot of flower buds on this bigger one they were both cuttings from my mum that i had last year i had one flower last year so hopefully we'll get quite a few um this one so this one's still quite small so i don't expect to have any flowers on that one and then this pot is also new it's hello oh <laughs> Um, this is a honeysuckle. It got dug out of my grand's garden. My grand didn't want it anymore. My mum tried to have it, but her um, garden's like too shady for it. And it was in a small pot. So I've put it in a bigger pot with some petunia. I, d I didn't know what else to put in there. And it's also, it started to make quite a few new shoots and I've just kind of hooked it onto this trellis. I don't know where I'm going to put it permanently, but it's here for now. And then here, so I've got one tomato. I didn't expect it to sprout, but it did. So I've got one tomato. These snapdragons I dug out of other pots. They were just like sprouted and they need to go somewhere. One backup cucumber, which is probably not even a backup anymore. It looks terrible. <laughs> Two sunflowers still need to go in and the cosmos and five little dahlia seedlings. So when I get compost, those will be going in. ASAP. Let's do a little overview. So this is it. Um, so from the peas, that is a succulent. It grows weird orange flowers. <laughs> These are all of my dahlia tubers. Oh, and some backup pumpkins. Got loads of pumpkins. Um, I noticed there was 
absolutely loads of aphids on these and I took the cover off my greenhouse like when I got back from my holiday and the aphids have gone and I've noticed the sparrows have been like going in and out and I think they've eaten them I think they've eaten all the aphids which is great um so we've got the Genova the Teesbrook Audrey I think it's called this one is oh that's the Cafe LA it's doing the worst out of all of them I think We've got the tubers that I saved last year, two hartenas. Ha um, this one, I have actually pinched it out, but it's just like one one long stalk, which is interesting. And then the Penhill watermelon. Um, those will be potted up as soon as I get compost. They'll be going in quite large pots, I think. And then probably <laughs> my favorite little bit, the strawberry planter. Oh, it's so exciting. Look at this one. I think it's almost ready. Probably tomorrow it will be ready, I think. Um, and they need a water. Ooh, it's really hot here. So I've got absolutely tons of strawberries this year and I'm so, so happy. But I've noticed that something's been eating them. Um, and I think it's a caterpillar of some kind because there's no like slime <laughs> anywhere to be seen. It's just, yeah, lots and lots of holes in the leaves. So I think that's caterpillar damage. Yeah, there's so many strawberries i'm so excited they definitely need a water and then up here i've got two more strawberries look at those they're amazing so this area is kind of like my greenhouse zone because it's undercover um it's still quite messy i've left all my like pots and tools out but whatever i've got some empty pots <laughs> tomatoes these are the main like things growing here so this is a plum tomato and i've just put some basil marigolds underneath um in this trough i have two chili plants i think they're jalapen jalapenos i can never say that um and then i've got three tomato plants behind it and obviously marigold yeah the tomatoes are sun gold so i need to make some kind of like structure back here or maybe like attach a trellis so yeah because they're gonna grow quite tall i thought they were bush varieties but i realized they're not got a trough of purple basil a trough of lemon basil and honestly this is the best my basil has ever been i'm so so happy i can't wait to start harvesting it i'm very excited for the lemon basil it smells so good oh it smells so so good <laughs> I've just got some pansies hanging on for dear life there and there and some little violas. I've got two more tomato plants. These are currants, currant tomatoes, red currants. I can't remember what they're called. So they're like super, super tiny. Um, I think they also grow quite tall. So I'll have to like put a stake in the pot or something and some alisum, <laughs> tiny alisums all my tools and pots up on the windowsill. I do have a couple of seedlings left. Alison, Petunia, Petunia, Lobelia. So these need to go out soon. I'm just gonna be chucking them in those pots, any pot that I can find, to be honest. Need to sort all this out. And then in the second trough, I have cucumbers. So in front I have the, I think these are sugar rush peach peppers and they're doing like really well, but they're not as bushy as the sugar rush peach that I have in the smaller pots. And I think that's because their roots have established and these are in a much bigger zone. So they're still establishing roots, I think, maybe. So yeah, these are sugar rush peach and then I have cucumbers behind. This one got eaten by a slug or snail, but it's kind of like come back to life. <laughs> I need to put a second trellis here for those two plants. And then these two cucumbers will go on this one this trellis I mean and this one I've noticed that there there is a tiny baby little cucumber forming already which is wild and I've obviously interplanted with marigolds um alisum and there's a random basil there that is a dill and this is also a plum tomato I think I've mixed the labels up but we'll see. I'll know when it grows and makes tomatoes. <laughs> I feel like I need something in this corner, something quite tall. Um, I was thinking of moving the passion flower there so it can grow like up a bit. And then I've got a basket of nasturtiums, which will hopefully like cascade down. Um, 
yeah and I also don't know what to do with this wall because it's like half painted there and then it's dark this side and I was thinking of just painting it all like a light grey to match the, the house colour uh, but I've never painted stone before so don't know I don't know maybe I won't do that maybe it's a job for next year we've got some more pansies those are doing quite well actually and I think this is the last thing to share with you this is a um tomato <laughs> uh a beefsteak tomato and a little marigold and spinach not spinach basil again um this one has already started to grow little armpit shoots but i won't pinch those out just yet <laughs> um again i'm not sure i guess i'll need a steak like up here maybe that one i will do like the string thing and then attach the string to one of the little screws up there I don't know. I don't know. And I've got a bag of strolch, an old broom, and another bucket of pansies that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> it's really, really hot. <laughs> so yeah, that's my little, my little garden. Uh, yeah, I do feel like there's a lot missing. I definitely need some more flowers, like instant colour in here because a lot of things haven't established yet and I feel like the only thing I have for the pollinators at the moment are the foxgloves and they're already going over so I'm kind of like worrying, worrying about the bees. <laughs> and I also feel like I'm lacking height, especially like under the cover, like below the nasturtiums there and in general I think I'm just lacking height. I guess I've got the archways but oh it's so bright. I do think even if I move like those potato bags to in front of this area it will shield the peppers a little bit maybe like use them as a windbreak or something because I do feel like they're just it's so hot and they're just getting battered and they're not having like a chance to recover <laughs> or maybe another thing I can do instead of putting the backup peppers in that bed I can make some kind of like teepee um and grow something like maybe like climbing branch beans if i can find some already started in the garden center maybe that will be a good idea because then th there'll be like a little bit of height that will give shade and a bit of shelter to the poor peppers i'm not sure yeah i'm not too sure what to do in that area if you have any ideas of how i can like create some shelter because this garden is an absolute sun trap and I feel like because it's just all paved, it just heats up. <laughs> it's just so hot. Um, yeah. I forgot to film an outro, so I'd just like to say a big thank you for watching. Thank you so much if you made it to the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next week for another garden video. <laughs> See you soon, friends. Bye.